This is Mr. Anger again. We have a lesson from uh, Physical Science Pace 1112. Um, I have a snow day today and I'm taking advantage of the opportunity to record several videos that I uh, have covering concepts that I know students have struggled with as they've gone through this pace. And I've often helped students with the same problems and uh, I just know by now which ones they tend to get stuck on. Here's a concept I want to clarify um, coming from pages 8, 9, and then on page 10. All right, there's three charts there. Very important. I want to point out what they are and what they mean. First off, let's talk about the fact that atoms that are on the left-hand side of the chart, these first two columns, are considered metals. All right? Now, when you think of metals, you might think of iron, nickel, copper, zinc, silver, gold, all right? But all of these over here, other than hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, those are all metals. Metals tend to want to give up an electron. So they only have one electron if they're in this column, two electrons in their outer shell, we call those valence electrons, if they're in this column. They want to give those up because as soon as they do, the shell right below that, the energy level, has the maximum number of electrons and so the atom is very happy. When it only has one or two, it just feels insecure and just wants to get rid of that electron, all right? By contrast, all of the atoms over here only need one electron and then they'll, they already have seven in their outer shell because they are in family seven. So if they get one more electron, they have eight. Eight's the magic number. As soon as they have eight, they're like, I'm happy, I'm satisfied, cool. All of these just need two electrons and then they'll be happy, all right? And then some of these in here, sometimes they want to give up some electrons, sometimes they want to gain. And that's what the chart on the top of page eight explains, all right? So let's find, uh, let's find that first one. Um, is lithium on there? Uh, these are ones that are, they'll sometimes gain or sometimes lose, okay? Sodium is on there, sodium Na. Notice it's a positive one. So where did that positive one come from? Well, remember, if you have the same number of protons as you have electrons. So sodium has 11 protons um, and 11 electrons. If it gives up that one electron, okay, now it has 11 protons, but only 10 electrons. So when sodium gives up one electron, it's no longer neutral. Now it still is sodium, so it still has 11 positives. So the positive charges outweigh the negative charges by one. There's one more positive charge than negative charges. So we would say sodium becomes a positive ion. Now technically, Positive ions are called cations, and negative ions are called anions. I don't think the paste makes a big deal out of that, so don't get stuck on that, all right? Positive, now, chlorine is in family seven. It only needs one electron. Let's see, it is element number 17. And if it gains one electron, then chlorine is like really happy. And so chlorine tends to take on a negative charge and become a negative ion, okay? Ion means a charged atom. It's not neutral anymore. So when we have a positive ion and a negative ion bonding together, in this case, sodium plus chlorine becomes sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is table salt. You're familiar with that. You put it on your food, all right? This is called ionic bonding. This is a way, a positive and a negative. The opposites attract and they bond to each other. It's a very strong bond. Let's take potassium. Potassium is in family one. Its element number is 19, but it has one electron and it tends to want to give that one electron up. As soon as it does, it becomes positively charged. Now, if you'll notice on your chart, on page nine, there's a table here of eh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven common radicals are called. 
These are groups of atoms that once they bond together, they are like inseparable. They're, they're best friends forever, you know, BFFs. And uh, you, CO3, once that bonds together, that is a carbonate ion, and it just, it just hangs together for the rest of its life. It'll bond with different atoms, um, but that group will stay together. They're radical, man. CO3 has a negative two charge. Up here, I'm going to look at NO3, nitrate. Nitrate, as a group, takes on a negative one charge. It tends to want to gain one electron, and then as a group, it's happy, all right? So if I take one potassium and one nitrate ion, they have a, a positive one and a negative one charge. So they will just boop, bond together. And we would call this molecule that's formed potassium nitrate. Okay, pretty easy. <clears throat> now let's look at this. We're going to keep the nitrate, which is negative one, but calcium is in family two. All right, it's so right here. Because it's in the column two, it has two electrons in its outer shell, so it tends to want to give up both electrons, giving it a positive two charge. Now we've got a problem. For this molecule to form, it has to be neutral. If I have a positive two charge, and this is only a negative one, I need two of these gangs to balance the electrons that are being discharged by this one calcium atom. So this is the way I would write it. S nitrate, put it in parentheses because this is a gang, all right? And I'm saying I need two of these gangs, two of the negative one gangs, to balance the one calcium. But the name is real easy, calcium nitrate, just like this was potassium nitrate. Okay, <clears throat> now let's do something a little different here. Lead sulfate. So I'm going to take the chart here. We're going to look up sulfate on here. It's SO4 and it has a charge of negative 2. And then I have lead. Now lead, if you look at the chart over here, on the top of page 8, lead can have a charge of positive 4 or positive two. So how do we know which one? Is it giving up four electrons or is it giving up two electrons? This is where the Roman numeral comes in, all right? Really easy. The Roman numeral tells you what the positive charge is. Isn't that cool? All right, so this is lead. Now lead is PB, positive two. So to figure out what the formula is for lead sulfate, I look at the charges, ah, positive two, negative two, I can just put these together and have PB SO4. I only need one of each of those and it will form a perfectly balanced, electrically balanced molecule. Now let's take copper and oxide. Oxygen is in family six, so it needs two electrons to be happy. So it tends to take on negative two. Copper, see the Roman numeral one? This copper, with Cu, means it has a positive one charge. So how am I going to get these two to balance and be a molecule? I'm going to need two of this copper. So the formula for that is going to be Cu2O, copper oxide. All right? You're going to work through several problems on uh, pages, let me find it in your pace here. On page E and page F. And here on page F, you'll notice <clears throat> we have copper 1, cobalt 3, all right? And all you have to do is figure out what the valence number is. So it's a positive number. That should be easy. Down here, you're going to list a number. How many total atoms of aluminum are there? How many total atoms of hydrogen? Now be careful, all right? You have to take the number in the parentheses and distribute it, kind of like you do in algebra, times the subscripts of these. So oxygen, each of these gangs has three oxygen, and I have three gangs. 
So a total of nine oxygen. And then out here is where we put how many, and then we put the name of that HCO3 radical. And you can look it up on the chart to see the name of that radical. And then down here, the last section on page F is very similar to what we were just doing here on the board, figuring out the positives, the negatives, and making a balance. You can only change the subscripts, the little numbers at the bottom. Once you've done that and you've scored those pages, make sure you understand them, then you should be ready to do the first checkup on pages G and H.